The biggest barrier I have seen to investing is the fact that people just don't know what to do or they don't want to make a mistake or they have this idea that navigating investment platforms is intimidating, overwhelming and not for the average Joe or Jane. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to open a Stocks and Shares ISR account with Vanguard, therefore smashing all those barriers. According to money.co.uk, as of 2022, 38% of UK adults have an ISA account and just 20% have an investment account. And I won't be surprised if some or all the reasons I mentioned earlier are the reason why we have these poor statistics. I get it. The truth is we might have studied or learned to become whatever we are professionally, but many of us have not just learned this investing stuff. Before we get started, let me put this out there. This video is not sponsored by Vanguard. I'm also not a financial advisor. Everything you hear in today's video is based on the fact that I use Vanguard. I actually do love the platform and that's where a large portion of my investment sits. I sincerely believe it's a solid platform, but just don't take my word for it. Do your own research. Today's video is going to be divided into two parts. In part one, I'm going to answer a couple of questions. And in part two, I'm going to share my screen and walk you step by step on how to open your own Vanguard ISA account. Now for the first question, who exactly is Vanguard? Vanguard is not just another investment platform. I believe Vanguard is a movement. The company was founded in 1975 by John Bogle and he had just one mission, to give all investors a solid chance at the stock market. At the time, he was regarded as a rebel. To paint the right picture, when you think of John Bogle, think Robin Hood. But then you might ask me, what exactly did John Bogle do that was so revolutionary? He took out the high fees usually associated with investing at the time. So instead of paying the so-called expert those massive fees, you simply invest in an index fund. No fancy stock picking, just buy the whole thing. And this reduced the complexity of investing and also the cost at the same time. Another fact that is important to know about Vanguard is the fact that Vanguard is owned by its investors. That's me and very soon you, not just some fat cats on Wall Street. And this is massive because that means that your success is also their success and vice versa. Vanguard is structured around buying and holding your investment for the long run. It's not a platform for trading. You also can buy individual stocks on Vanguard. And this is perfect, but if you still want to buy individual stocks, just like me, you could register on some other platforms that offer this service. Before I share my screen, here are the best practices when it comes to investing. Number one, invest for the long term. One of the reasons I invest is for financial independence, which is a pretty long term goal for me. Investing for the long term is so important because it helps you take your eyes off short term market fluctuations or crash. And that leads me nicely to the second point, which is don't panic during market downturns. Breaking news, there will be downturns in the markets, but there will also be uptime also, but you are in need for the long term, so don't panic. Another best practice that will also make you not panic is to diversify your investments. Investing in the global stock market is solid, but you could also invest in the S&P 500. These two funds are diversified enough to be able to absorb any market shock. And lastly, do your research. Before you invest in anything, take your time to research the company, research the fund you're investing in, and also research the risks involved with that investment. And lastly, invest consistently. This could be weekly, this could be every two weeks or monthly. Just pick a schedule that works for you. Contact your bank and set up an automatic transfer to your investment account. Now let's jump to my screen where I'm going to show you how to do just that. Please feel free to pause this video now. Open up your computer so you can follow along. I don't want you to procrastinate. Do this now. If you already have an account, there are timestamps in this video so you could just skip to the section that you need. It's also important to know that Vanguard doesn't have an app. 
but the website is optimized for mobile phones and the experience is great. First, we will go to vanguard.co.uk. This is the UK version of the website. You could also visit global.vanguard.com to see the list of countries you can access the platform from. And also, all links will be in the description. Right at the top of the website, click the link that says open an account. This page will tell you all the information that you need to sign up. National insurance number, your debit card and bank details. Then you click start my application. This will bring you to this screen where you have four types of accounts to choose from. We will open the stocks and shares ISA, but you've got other account options as well, such as pension, which also has its own tax incentives in the form of rebates. One thing about pension is you can't withdraw your money till you're 55, which will change to 57 from 2028. And also with pension, you would pay tax on the funds at the point of taking them out. You also have junior ISAs, which is a way to invest for your kids. And then you have a Vanguard general investment account. This account doesn't have the tax benefits that is associated with the stocks and shares ISA. One thing to note here is if you have an existing ISA, don't take it out and then put it back in the Vanguard platform. You can transfer in from the old platform. But from April, you would be able to open multiple stocks and shares ISAs in the same taxi and you don't have to transfer if you don't want to. We will be starting as a brand new investor. This page tells you exactly how the stocks and shares ISA work. You can pay up to £20,000 into an ISA each tax year and you need your national insurance number, a debit card details to make either a single payment of £500 minimum or a monthly payment of £100 minimum. Read through this and then click continue. On this page, read through and confirm that you are eligible to open a NICER account. Now we are on the Create Account Details page. So type in your details and I will skip to the end of the account opening process. After entering the information about you, you will have to choose your funds. So basically, there are two types of funds. You have ready-made fund, and then if you scroll down, you would see, yeah, build your own portfolio, So and then you have cash. So the ready-made fund is divided into three, life strategy, target retirement, and then global funds. Life strategy just basically means that it has a group of funds, stocks and bonds together. And then each of those funds are now grouped based on the risk profile that you want. So if you click life strategy, you can open it so that we would see... So then you see you have life strategy, 100% equity fund. So this would be like the most adventurous of the life strategy funds, right? Because it's 100% stocks and they will choose what stocks they want in it. But here you have life strategy, 20% equity fund, which means it has 20% stocks and 80% bonds. So bonds are like they don't perform as much as stocks. They are like loans that companies and governments would put out there for people to buy and then they will pay you back interest at certain times. So they don't usually perform as much as stocks. Well, people like it in their investments because it kind of helps to shock the volatile nature of of stocks. You know, stocks goes up and down. So bonds helps to cushion that effect. So 20% equity, 40% equity, 60%, 80%. So that's basically 
or the life strategies. And each of them have like a key investor information that will give you a lot more detail. So if you click, click the 20% equity, just so just quickly, just look at the information. So if you look at it, like the third line from the top of the screen, it says 20% shares and 80% bonds. So basically, these are the kind of information you want to go through before you even invest in any fund. Okay, so that's that for life strategy. So just scroll to, let's see the second one, target retirement. Yeah, so basically this one is similar to life strategy, but the difference between the two of them is with the target retirement, you are telling the fund that, okay, I'm going to retire in 20 years time. So if you add 20 years plus 2024, that's 2044. So you are going to look for a fund. You say target retirement, 2030, that's too early, scroll down, 2035, 20. So 2045 will be like the closest that we want. So if you choose this kind of fund, the fund will automatically rebalance itself. So now that you are starting 20 years time, they are going to invest in a lot of stocks, but the closer you are to that date, they will now be reducing the amount of stocks that you are exposed to and be investing in bonds for you, or not just investing in bonds, changing a lot of your investments from stocks to bonds. So that's what this will do. And usually this is perfect for a lot of people that just want to do it once and don't want to think about it for the next, for as long as possible. And they are okay with the funds being rebalanced in that nature. But some people don't want it. Me personally, I don't, anybody that is young, I don't advise the person to do this either. But it's not bad, but it's not just my preference. So... If you go, to, if you scroll down, let's go to the DIY funds, the build your portfolio. So you could either do equity, fixed income, fixed income. See here, it says also known as bonds, equity, also known as stocks and shares. So we want equity. That's what we want to invest. So click equity. Also with equity, we want to invest in either the US S&P 500 or we want to invest in a global funds. Well, choose a global fund more. So you scroll down, this is, these funds are UK. So scroll down, so this is Asia, we don't want Asia, we don't want Europe, we want global, but just scroll down to the end. So we see the other regions that we have. Um, we have emerging markets, so the Brazil, South Africa, maybe Nigeria with the like USA, um, scroll down, you have Japan, and that's that's the last. So we want to invest in global funds. So go back to global. Then which global funds? We don't want to invest in the ESG funds. So scroll down. We want to invest in... So if you look at this, FTSE, All World High Dividends Yield ETF. So this is a type of global fund that you can click this investor information and read through, but we'll just skip all that. So the one that I'm looking for would be scroll down. So if you look at this, you will see accumulating and distributing for each of these funds. So accumulating just means that whatever returns you get every year, accumulating would add that back to your principal. So let's say 2024. The your funds your five hundred pounds you get hundred pounds it grows to a hundred pounds that hundred pounds will be added to your five hundred automatically and then for ten twenty five six hundred will be what will be invested but for distributing you would pay you the hundred pounds and then you would now decide what you want to do with it do you want to invest it or you want to withdraw and spend. So the one I'm looking for is FTSE Developed World, excluding the UK equity index funds. So if you look at it, you see that there are some ETFs and in, and some of them are index funds. 
ETFs basically means that you can, these are funds that you can buy and sell anytime in the day. So you can just wake up and go and then there will be a price at that moment where you can now sell or buy. But for index funds, the price is determined usually at the end of the trading day. So you can't do it during the day. So you, you can put in your requests, but it won't materialize until you've gotten the final figure, like at the end of the day. Yep, so choose your payment. Um, so you could either do a single fund, which is what single payments, which is what we want to do, or you do the monthly single, that's fine. Continue. Cost and charges to invest with us. So um, open the document. It's important from this point, you want to read the documents. If you can, it says the ongoing cost. These are costs we take each year for managing your investments. That's all about costs. And um, that's why we say people should do index funds because it's very cheap compared to if you're going to, if you're trying to do an active fund right where there is a an investment banker somewhere that has chosen the makeup of that fund you are going to have to pay that person's salary and also pay for his the office building and all that so you mm -hmm. think you'll be paying like two percent at the minimum as management fee every year whether you make your your stocks make money or they don't make money so continue so, um, yeah, you want to read the key features, the declaration, terms and condition. It's important that you read all of that, but we've read it, right? So you tick to confirm. Disclaimer, read your documents. Confirm. That's good. And then you're done. Then going forward, if you log in, so this is what you see. Your ISA allowance shows you how much um, allowance you have left this tax year. So because you're just starting, you have 19500 Investment shows you everywhere, all the places you're invested in. Over time, you would see your rate of return, what it is, but don't worry about it because you're invested for the long term, right? So you're not going to touch any of this money for at least the next 10 years, unless you retire so sooner than that. Basically, it won't matter because tomorrow you might log in and see minus 10% or minus 20%, there's no cost for alarm. But the moment you keep buying, doing that monthly contribution. So when the stock market is down, just think of it like you're buying at a discount because the price is down. When it's high, you're buying at sometimes at an exorbitant rate because the rates are so high, but over time, low high you would have a very positive nice positive average your 100 pounds coming and they can't invest everything at once so they might invest 60 pounds then you would see available cash 40 then you have the last transaction and of course you have transfer ISA. so if you have an isa account with another provider you can now click that and start the process to transfer that ISA and the money in there into your own into this into this platform. So if you scroll up on the side, let's just just quickly explain. Most of them are the same, right? Investments, investment, that's what's here. Payments, that's where 
where you can withdraw, add funds. So if you want to withdraw, it's payments you go to. If you want to add funds, like some kind of money just enters your account and you feel like, I want to invest it. I still have 19K. This 10K that hit my account, let me just put everything in the ISA. Then you go to payments and add. Transactions will show you your past transactions like that history statement. Um, open a new account. So if you want to open a junior ISA for your child or you want to open a pension account, messages, very self-explanatory then documents for every month you invest even this 500 you'll get a document that will be sent to your email and you can also find them here that is that so let me show you the user-friendly version of that document so if you scroll up to search you put that FTSE 100 thing so search it. that's it so click overview so this is a more user-friendly this is the current price. So the 500 that you put, you're going to buy about 90% of one share. Then the number of stocks, this just shows for this fund, there are over 2000 companies that are in this fund. The ongoing charge is 0.14. We've seen that it says the risk is five. If you look at the objective, you see the first line, this fund, this fund is a passive fund, and that's what you are looking for. And it tells you what the fund tracks. So if you look at the past performance, you see that the fund did 17.22%. So that was why I got in this fund last year. While the benchmark, which is the index, was 17.29. Usually it's going to be, the gap won't be so much. But in 2022, the fund didn't make any money, lost money, lost value by 8%. And it just shows you what have happened in the in the past. If you look at this graph, this graph shows you how the fund has performed from 2009. So if you, if you invested 10,000 pounds in 2009, you would have over close to 60,000 pounds today. This is how much the money would have grown. So look at the exposure. North America, 73.5%. So North America will be US majorly. Europe is just 14%. Pacific, Middle US, 70%. Japan, 7%. France, Canada, 28 So just showing you the makeup of the funding. So you see the companies that is highest, has the highest representation, technology companies. Then you have, yeah, you have consumer, discretionary, industrials, financials, healthcare, and the company with the highest um, holding in this fund is Apple, 4%. So you are invested in Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Nvidia, Alphabet, which is Google, Facebook, which should be Meta, what well, is Facebook inclusion here. Scroll down, let's see some other companies there. Tesla, Eli Lilly. So just 2,000 companies like Spotify will be there, Netflix will be there, I'm sure. Um, JP Morgan, HSBC. 2,000 companies like that's as diverse as it can be. That's it. And congratulations.